Choosing between the Arduino Uno Q and the Raspberry Pi 5 can be confusing. Both run Linux, they are both powerful, and they are both designed for modern embedded systems, but they solve very different problems. In this video, I will break down everything you need to know so you can choose the right board for your next project, whether it is robotics, IoT, AI, automation, or edge development. The Arduino Uno Q is a hybrid board. It combines a Qualcomm QCS2210 processor that runs Linux with a separate STM32 microcontroller for real-time control. It is one board that has a microprocessor and a microcontroller. So in one board, we have a Linux machine and then we also have an Arduino machine. The Arduino side is the STM32 U585 that behaves like the Arduino. Then the Raspberry Pi is a full single board computer designed for general computing, Python development, and high-speed workloads. In terms of their differences in architecture, the Arduino Uno Q has two brains. First, the Qualcomm QCS2210 that runs Linux for networking, AI, and advanced processing. Then we have the STM32 microcontroller that handles motors, sensors, and timing critical tasks. This combination makes it incredibly stable for robotics and IoT edge devices. Then the Raspberry Pi 5 has one main processor designed to run a full operating system with high speed performance, but it does not include a dedicated microcontroller by default, unlike the Arduino Uno Q. Therefore, real-time tasks usually require extra hardware. In terms of performance comparison, the Raspberry Pi 5 wins in raw performance with a 2.4 GHz ARM CPU and up to 16 GB of RAM. It can handle heavy Python code, AI libraries, databases, and graphical applications. The Arduino Uno Q, on the other hand, uses a more efficient Qualcomm processor designed for IoT devices and not desktop level computing. However, here is the key point. The Arduino Uno Q's microcontroller gives you consistent real-time behavior, something the Raspberry Pi cannot do without additional hardware. The Arduino Uno Q gives you both words. You can write Linux applications on the Qualcomm processor and program the STM32 microcontroller using the Arduino IDE. The Raspberry Pi 5 is strictly a Linux environment. You program mostly in Python, JavaScript, or C++. If you want a hybrid workflow that mixes Linux automation and low-level microcontroller tasks, the Uno Q is unique. If you need a full PC-like Linux environment, the Raspberry Pi 5 is unbeatable. The Raspberry Pi 5 offers more general purpose ports, USB 3, dual HDMI, PCIe, Ethernet, camera connectors, and fast networking. The Arduino Uno Q, however, gives you cleaner, more reliable pin level inputs and outputs through its STM32 microcontroller plus modern IoT connectivity from the Qualcomm chip. So the Pi 5 is perfect for multimedia, displays and heavy networking, while the Arduino Uno Q is perfect for sensors, robotics and devices that require millisecond level accuracy. So here is what each board is perfect for in real world application. Use the Arduino Uno Q for robotics control, IoT edge devices, automated systems, mechatronics, real-time sensors, and hybrid projects that combine AI with precise motor control. Then use the Raspberry Pi 5 for AI vision, web servers, dashboards, data processing, media centers, Linux software development, and automation that doesn't require precise timing. The Arduino Uno Q is generally more efficient and consumes less power than the Raspberry Pi 5. The Raspberry Pi 5, while powerful, draws more energy and requires cooling for heavy workloads. Prices varies region by region, but Uno Q tends to be cheaper than a full Raspberry Pi 5 setup with accessories. If you want real-time robotics control, low power consumption, and a hybrid Linux plus microcontroller environment, choose the Arduino Uno Q. If you want full computing power, advanced AI, connectivity, and a Linux PC experience, choose the Raspberry Pi 5. Both are excellent, but they are made for different types of creators. So guys, tell me in the comment section which board fits your next project. And don't forget to like this video and subscribe if you have not subscribed. Like so that the YouTube algorithm can recommend this video to other developers alike. And drop any questions you have about each of the boards. And I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching and bye-bye.